I think we're recording now. So hello. Um, so like Jenny said, this will be a series that we're doing really about slideshows. Slideshows have always been very relevant to all of our works, um, whether you are in an instruction position or not, um, because of conferences. I get a lot of question about this um, kind of stuff for conferences as well. So uh, this applies to you. So remember that this is a first in a series. So today we're really just talking about creation. So the second one is going to be about creating engaging uh, slideshows. So we'll talk about interactivity um, and actually like techniques or tips and tricks of how to present. Um, and then the last one's going to be accessibility. So I, I mentioned accessibility throughout kind of, uh, but I really am going to save that all for that third one. But again, if you have any questions about that, um, let me know um, and we can uh, talk through it some today. And just a disclosure, uh, I have to pick up my daughter at 2.05. Uh, so I will have to end this probably at around 155, but I think that will still give us plenty of time to present and have a good conversation around this topic of creating beautiful slideshows. So y'all know me, I'm Sam. Um, I'm the online learning librarian. So again, I've been doing these instructional tech sessions uh, for a while now. So um, I work with a lot of people on that stuff. I also work with um, all the department instructional technology consultants, as well as um, UNCG online. So I try to attend and I hear a lot about new tools and things about um, this kind of like graphic design, online presentation stuff. Um, but I'm not the only person, right? Um, the UTLC, the University of Teaching and Learning Commons, they do workshops on um, pedagogy and design, as well as ITS. So I did link on here to the workshops page if people want to check it out um, to see what other virtual workshops are going on, as well as you know your colleagues. I think it's important to note, um, and I have done this, if you see a great slideshow at a conference, um, I think it's OK to say, this slideshow is great. Did you use a template? Um, and we're going to talk about templates and stuff like that. Um, and again, even emailing them later is fine. Um, or you could uh, get that link that hopefully they shared with you, because that is, again, a great technique, which we're going to talk about and uh, look at it later. So here's the link to these slides. Um, there are some links on here to uh, resources, tools, um, things like that. So um, I'm going to um, I grabbed it so that I could uh, throw it in the chat. And here it is. So there it is, if you wanted to save it for later. Um, and we'll send it out to, it can be, it can live on the ULVLC guide and other guides as well, um, if we uh, like it. So today we're really gonna be talking about design. So we're gonna talk about some basic techniques of design. I'm gonna show you free resources for templates, um, hopefully even some that you haven't um, you know, heard of before and strategies for creating your own templates. And then we're gonna talk about sharing, like how you would, once you've created these beautiful slideshows, share them with your audience. Um, and then we'll have, I hope, I guess, plenty of time for questions and discussions. So to start us off, if you um, know me, you know I love a minty. Um, you can go on your phone or to a browser and go to this www.minty.com. And then the code is 8951228. But I thought it would be good to kind of think about what do you think makes a good slideshow or a beautiful slideshow or presentation? Um, what stands out to you when you're viewing these, whether online or if we remember when we used to go to these face to face? Um, in terms of the design, like the actual like style of the slideshow. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll look at your answers there. So again, you can totally use your phone. You can just open up a new browser. All of that should work. Um, great, people are already doing it. So here it is again at the top, if uh, that was too quick for you. Um, I can't see it because it's that Zoom. Okay, so the, it's still www.minty.com and the code is 8951228. Um, so someone said not too much text. Yes, great one. Um, readability, cats, <laughs> yes. I don't always put cats in mine, um, you know, but I do always enjoy when people have cats or dogs or um, animals in general in theirs. Uh, there's one that I think Jenny and I and Rachel used for um, an adapt session where we had dinosaurs and we got tons of comp compliments on the dinosaurs. <laughs> um, so someone said clear and not cluttered, engaging colors, sometimes photographs, but crisp and clear is ideal. Yes, so we want them to really be clean. I'm seeing that kind of come up again. Um, we don't want it to be like 
all over the place in terms of that. So then someone brings up here, modern colors, fonts and graphics, a coherent color scheme. Yes, we're gonna talk about color schemes. Slides that are pretty, but not too distracting. Font and color contrast. Great content doesn't matter if it's not readable, yes. And again, we're gonna talk about accessibility a little bit throughout here. Um, and we're gonna talk about like fonts and things like that. But um, again, we're gonna have a whole session on accessibility, uh, which includes the, prop the appropriate text size that you need to always be using and things like that. And what kind of fonts aren't fun. Um, so yeah, graphics, funny, yes. Yeah. So one thing that I think maybe Jenny said to me once is that, um, you know, it's great to be funny in your slideshows, but you know, you also don't have to force it. <laughs> like if you don't, um, if it's like you got to get through the content and you don't feel comfortable being funny, that's totally fine as well. You don't have to be funny. Um, I don't know if I'm always funny. Um, so yeah, fun images. So someone said no transition effects. Yeah, especially Prezi swooping. That's interesting. And now that you actually say Prezi, I did not include Prezi on here, but I should have, and I will add it in later. I just like forgot about Prezi because yeah, Prezi's got so hot for a period and um, they were being used a lot. And remember all that swooping. I remember when I was in library school, which was a long time ago, um, someone introduced me to Prezi and they just were swooping away into those things. So yeah. Um, so yeah, but we'll talk about Prezi a little bit. Again, I just totally forgot to put that in there, um, but yes. Um, so yeah, Sean said, I like Prezi or I liked Prezi. Um, I don't know if that was meant to be past tense or current tense, but yeah, um, PowerPoint was just that. Yeah, so Prezi can have some good things too. And again, I would have normally put it on here. I, again, I just was, I will add a slide about Prezi uh, moving forward. Okay. And again, one thing to note about this, right, is that not all of the things are the same. Um, someone might like the Prezi um, transitions and kind of, again, getting out of this idea of that slideshows have to be, you know, um, these static things in terms of boxes that move forward. Um, but then some people might not like that. So it's good to keep um, them in um, you know, mind that there's different, that there's, though there are like these basic graphic des design techniques, um, we are different people. So yeah, thank you all for doing that. Y'all are a great audience. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about are design, right? So creating your own slides from scratch. So one disclaimer about all of this from the get-go is that I am not an artist um, or the ultimate expert on this. Um, so this is a conversation. Um, I do not um, have a graphic design background. I've just been doing instructional tech stuff um, and learning these tools for a long time. So that's the thing. A lot of my experience is just that I've tested these. I've um, tried a lot of these tools that we're talking about. So I have kind of experience with that. But again, we're all um, probably equal level artists. And I know there's even some people in the library who have a, um, you know, graphic design background, right? Um, so um, keep that in mind that there's people in this room that um, are probably better, are def not be probably, definitely better artists than me. Uh, so this is a conversation. Feel free to put stuff in the chat. I'm really trying to monitor it throughout. And uh, Jenny, you're welcome to stop me and uh, tell me if things are going on that need to be addressed. But um, yeah, this is a conversation. So um, one thing to keep in mind before we kind of delve into the design stuff is do you really need a slideshow, right? Do you actually need it? So um, sometimes like I come in and I do demos to a class and they just want me to come in for 15 minutes. And to me, that's like not worth my time to make a slideshow that's gonna have like a table of contents and an introduction, right? Like really, I'm just gonna want them to see my face, show them the library website, um, talk, you know, answer their questions and move on. Like we don't always need a slideshow for every single thing we go to, um, including virtual stuff. But slideshows can be nice in order of helping us stay on track as well as being kind of like a repository or place to store all the links. Um, and, and if you're teaching a class, you can totally use them, especially if you're trying to, again, stay on track and kind of match these specific learning goals. Um, and at this point, they are typically used while presenting at a conference. I have been to some lightning talk kind of styles that didn't use them. Um, but again, in this day and age of um, so many templates, so many things available online, um, then uh, more and more you're seeing that they are used even in lightning talks, you know, again, just one slide uh, kind of deal. Um, so yes, um, yeah. And so do you need to show screenshots or how to do something while presenting? 
Again, if you like need those screenshots, if you're worried about the internet, again, sometimes I've been to conferences where the internet, they want you to have like a PDF copy in case the internet goes off. And again, if you were planning on going off into a website and demoing something, again, a slideshow, a presentation can be a good place where you could have screenshots of what you were about to demo in case of any tech issues. Um, so yeah. And I see Audrey was saying, um, I prefer imagery that fits the audience, e.g. academics versus elementary school mentality, yes. Um, so knowing your audience, yes, is helpful um, in terms of if they need a presentation or not. Okay, so would it work better as a multimedia site? Um, so um, the big thing is that a slideshow is really, again, almost like what Amy was saying, right? Like it helps us keep on track and it helps us like stay on point and then it can be good for demoing. Um, but do you need something that needs to live online, have this URL that's ready forever and also have like interaction? And also do you need to be able to assess it? Do you need to see how many people are hitting it? So there's ways you can share your presentation where you can get some of this stuff. And we're gonna talk about you know, creating interactive presentations uh, in this next section. But again, websites can also be useful. And remember when you're presenting, uh, you can go through a website in a similar way uh, that you can go through this. So two of the, the, the four that usually are used at UNCG are Google Sites, specifically new Google Sites. I just wonder if there's a certain point where we'll stop calling them new Google Sites. Uh, but they're easy to make and, uh, you know, good. Be sure you're talking to your um, supervisor or project people about it because maybe it needs to actually be on UNCG's website, right? Um, and therefore WordPress or something like WordPress. Our, our website's a little bit different than WordPress. And then of course, some other alternatives are Adobe Spark. Uh, it kind of is again, the flowing presentation style. It takes you again out of this uh, box, like moving forward like this. And then of course, LibGuides, which uh, I think a lot of us are familiar with, but they are work, they work a lot better if you need to like link to databases, link to, um, resources, again, more of as a link repository. And they, again, give you these like embed codes that work a little bit better if you're trying to embed a variety of things within the site as well. Okay, so um, there's different slideshow creation tools that we're gonna go over today. And again, sorry that I didn't mention Prezi, but we can talk about Prezi and I can go over Prezi because I do have some experience with Prezi and people can share their experiences with Prezi. But the big ones are that I typically get asked about and see used lately are Google Slides, PowerPoint and Canva, uh, which does have a presentation uh, component to it if you're used to seeing it used for flyers, infographics and things like that. Um, so the big thing about whatever you choose, and we're going to go into a little bit of detail about each of these tools, is that it's good to know your tool, know the limits of your tool, right? Like, are there file storage limits? Can you not embed in them? Uh, do some things work in them and some things not? Can you share them? Can you work collaboratively with them? Um, and that kind of thing. Another thing is that, you know, all of these tools uh, to the left, including Prezi, are used a lot. So be sure to look for inspiration. There's nothing wrong with going to a conference or looking at a conference website or um, looking in repositories and seeing kind of what else people are doing with these kind of slideshows and uh, getting motivated in that way. Hey, Sam, we had a question yeah. from Lois about Adobe Spark. Do we yeah. have a yes. subscription? Yeah, so Adobe Spark is a part of the Adobe Suite, which we do have um, access to at UNCG. Um, so, um, but Adobe Spark is like 100%, I think, uh, cloud-based. So unlike the other Adobe products, um, like Photoshop, uh, all the things, um, then uh, you don't have to actually um, download stuff from the UNCG ITS webpage the way you would download like Word. But Spark does allow you to um, go through their website and log in with a single sign-on. Uh, so if you haven't done that before, um, I think UNCG ITS has a page on it um, and uh, we can go through that at the end. But again, it's like a single sign-on option and then you're logged in with your UNCG account. And again, it's web-based. So then you can like edit from there similar to how you would um, web edit a um, libguide or a WordPress site or a new Google site in that way. So I'm trying to think if I can like think of any examples of Adobe Spark like off my, off the top of my head, um, like that I could just Google and show you all. Like there was a period where ITS was using it to like kind of do some like informational stuff, but um, yeah. Does that help though? 
Lois says thank you. So yeah. yes. So you um, can go here to um, spark.adobe.com um, and see they're gonna still, you could get the details here, but again, you shouldn't have to download anything um, like from here, like the way you would download software. Um, I don't, this might be bad to say in a recording, but I don't love the um, knowledge base. Do y'all know not like this uh, that you have to go through? Let's see if they have anything on it. Sometimes there's stuff and sometimes there isn't. No, of course not. So yeah, um, and again, Lois, we can talk about it later and I can get you like set examples, but there should just be like, when you go to Adobe Spark, a single sign-on option, and then you should be able to just log in through UNCG um, in that way. And I can test it again later. Yeah. Okay, great. So you did. It can be tough to navigate. I was able to sign in Spark. Perfect. Thank you, Liz. Okay. So we're going to go into the tools. So Google Slides is what I typically use um, because what I like the most about it is that it is so cloud based, right? Again, no downloads. I just use it all straight from a browser. Um, and straight from there. And uh, though they don't have a lot of their own templates, uh, tons of the templates things that I'm going to share with you um, have a Google slide option. So the thing I like about it most is that you can easily add in collaborators and just be working on it at the same time. Um, and we're gonna talk about PowerPoint. PowerPoint does have an option to do that. It just doesn't work as well in terms of that same time editing and uh, communicating within it. Uh, so of course they are um, also, because they are so web-based, you can share them easily with a link as well as publish them on, a web, on the web, um, which makes them embeddable. So you can get that embed code, those iframe codes, which means that then you can like insert them with embed in Canvas, uh, Pages, and LibGuides. Uh, so it can be this nice visual thing that you embed into places. Um, you can also install accessibility apps with it. Um, actually, PowerPoint has more built-in accessibility stuff, which we'll talk more in that third session about that. Um, but you can uh, check for accessibility using their kind of apps that you can add on. And because it's cloud-based, there are tons of apps that come with it. So like polling software, you can integrate that with it. Um, again, tons of apps that kind of work within it, including like YouTube, right? Because um, Google owns YouTube. Um, so cons, not all institutions have Google accounts. So if you're working across the nation with another librarian or maybe working with like an elementary school teacher, a middle school teacher, a high school teacher, um, they don't have Google accounts. So it can be kind of annoying to get them on it, um, to do that without their own Gmail account. And it's kind of, I mean, for me, I like don't want to make someone sign up for a Gmail account. Um, and then the big thing too is that, you know, when you're sharing these links, when you're embedding them, you have to make sure that you're sharing this correctly, that you're sharing it public. Um, if you want it to be public, not just to UNCG only, which is the default when you share them. Um, and again, there's not many built in templates. Like if you go to the, to the template part, there's like only I think about six. And I keep thinking they're going to add more, but they don't. Maybe again, because of all these like kind of template companies that have popped up. So if you want to learn more about this, I linked here to this Google how to create Google Slides um, how to field, as well as um, there was a um, webinar for one of our UNCG libraries webinar ser series from UNCG online on embedding Google Slides. Um, so if you want to learn more about that and why it's a good idea, um, that goes out to there. And I'm also happy to show you all too how to get embed code um, from that. So Audrey asked, what did I use to make this, create this presentation? Um, I'm gonna go through templates in a little bit, but spoiler, it was slides go. Um, and uh, shout out to Lois for showing me slides go because I she definitely showed it to me. And I think she did it in a, a ULVLC session. And I was like, wow, that's cool. And I haven't seen it before. So this is slides go. Okay, PowerPoint. Um, so. PowerPoint has been around since the beginning of slideshow time. <laughs> they were the first. And therefore, they're you know very intuitive to use. A lot of us grew up even using PowerPoint, maybe, or like seeing PowerPoints, right? And it's such a big thing that a lot of times when I go to conferences or something, they'll be like, where's your PowerPoint? Right? Even if I'm using something totally different, uh, they're like, where's your PowerPoint? Where's your doing? So it's again, it's become a term that's synonymous with slides. So again, it's classic and it 
because of that, it's easy to use Microsoft. It works in a similar way that Microsoft Word does, which again, all of us are very familiar with. Um, because they've been around so long, they have again, similar to Google, a lot of interactive features and build-ins. Like it works with Camtasia. You can annotate sli you know, slideshows now, like straight from there and more. So Microsoft has been working really hard to compete with Google in terms of having cloud options. So if you create a Office 365 account, which all of us at UNCG have, um, and can use. Um, there are versions to create a link to a PowerPoint, to work on it online, to add in collaborators online. Saying that, it is not as intuitive or easy to use as Google, especially adding in collaborators from outside your institution that might not have these Office 365 accounts. Whereas at this point, a lot of people we're working with nationally have at least a Gmail. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, it can be not that friendly. Um, but they actually do have also, um, I forgot to say this, more templates. So if you're really into like looking at their templates, if you open up PowerPoint on your computer um, on the back end, you can look through their templates and they have a lot more than Google. And again, they've gotten better over the years. They're clean, they're modern, um, and they're easy to edit, you know, right from there. They also have a better accessibility checker that's built in. You don't have to add any add-ons. And their way that they do alt, ca alt captioning in images um, is easier and more intuitive because they have a decorative option. So um, again, we'll talk more about this in that third installment. But if you add an image into a PowerPoint, you have to um, create an, a caption for it, an alt tag. Um, of the image, and uh, if but if it's decorative, if there's no need need for it except that it's just like visually appealing, you can mark it as decorative in PowerPoint. You cannot do that in Google Docs. You have to put in a call alt tag and then just say decorative stock image of a waterfall, like whatever you're using. So here's a um, here is the UNCG ITS page where you can get any Microsoft product. Um, at UNCG, you can have Microsoft Office products, all of them, on up to five computers. Um, so keep that in mind uh, if you're at have an office, if you're working from home, if your partner gets a uh, you know com you know computer five. That's how many you get. Um, so again, if you're gonna be here a while, keep that in mind too. Um, and that doesn't count like if you get a laptop from UNCG and they install it for you. They're talking about like downloads on non UNCG devices. Um, and then there, here's a uh, Microsoft on how to use um, PowerPoint if you wanted a refresher or want to uh, look into that. Um, so the next one I was going to talk about is Canva. And then I can also, again, quickly talk about Prezi and my experience with it. And maybe like Sean or other people can talk about um, Prezi as well. But the pros is that it is online based and it comes with many templates. And they are like a graphic design tool, right? So their templates are very modern, come with a lot of very clean, crisp images. They have a lot of like cityscapes, again, these very modern um, image focused uh, color, you know, driven ones. Con is that with the free account of Canva um, that you you can't always export PDFs of every template um, and you can like share a link to it. But again, then the link maybe isn't in like present mode. It's not as stable as it is when these Google Slides ones. Uh, so it's not as easy to share them. Um, and again, you can't always get a PDF out without paying. Um, you can learn from my mistake and that I decided for a conference to make a um, presentation in Canva. It was very clean and modern. It worked pretty well. Um, but then when I went to export it, they were like, oh, you're like, you're out of limits for like free, your free version. And they, I had to pay, I mean, it was, I had to pay like a dollar or something, but like, I was annoyed because I was like, oh, I have no other option at this point. Like the presentations in, you know, a couple days, I can't get it out. Cause you can't, unlike Google slide and PowerPoint, you can convert, right? You can convert a PowerPoint to Google slide. You can convert a Google slide to PowerPoint, but you cannot convert a Canva to a Google slide or a PowerPoint. Uh, it is its own thing. And the only way you can export it as a file is a PDF. So um, another bad thing about Canva to keep in mind, and again, we're gonna talk more about accessibility later. They do not have basically any accessibility tools. So all those images, all the text, you have to be really careful when you export it into PDF to have it be OCR'd uh, for the text, which a lot of times I have to do that myself when I create a flyer in there. And then in terms of the images, there's no really way to alt capture them unless you put it into some kind of PDF editor, um, which I don't like to do um, and I'm not an expert on. Um, so keep that in mind about Canva um, as well. So does anyone have any questions about those three? Um, and again, we can talk a little bit about Prezi. 
Um, but those are the three I've seen a lot used a lot. And again, Prezi is constantly changing and is um, good. So I can add in a slide on this later. Um, but does anyone have any questions while I'm putting a placeholder for Prezi? I'm not hearing any, so sorry. It's fun to watch you. Yeah, there you go. I'm working away on uh, my uh, this template. So um, one thing about Prezi, they were flash based for a long time, but they did fix that. But the problem with then they fixed that if that if you have old presentations in Prezi, uh, they do not convert. So a lot of links broke. Some people were embedding Prezi because uh, you can embed Prezi's um, onto things. And then when they converted over to HTML5, all the old ones broke and they didn't really provide a great way to convert over. So um, I hate to be the bearer of bad news if you were like, really into Prezi and you wanted all those old presentations you were maybe working on. Um, but one thing about Prezi, I don't know if y'all remember um, our now soon to be starting um, electronic resources librarian, Catherine Highland, used Prezi like the way these images are, right? Where you can like have things go right by a background. Um, it's pretty cool, but you have to have the educator account. Um, so I think she might've even paid a little bit of money for it, but um, there might be ways that you can now these days manipulate it for students. So again, these tools change often. Um, the, again, they're at like, you know, they've become more integration focused Prezi. They can go into Zooms, um, Google Meets in this way. Um, like again, the way Catherine was using it, if anyone remembers, was a like Zoom integration through Prezi. Um, it was pretty cool if y'all don't remember it. Again, it was just similar, like pretty much similar to what this person's doing where it had uh, things come up on the right. Uh, so one thing I have not checked into this, I can check into it later, is that um, you need to be careful about accessibility, right, and like where this is going to live, because this, if this is a recording, right, like all of this text is going to be really hard to tag, um, though it can be, look cool in the moment, um, but you would probably also want to provide a link to that later um, and make sure that it was like you can read over it. Um, so keep that in mind, but you can check this out. We do not at UNCG have Prezi for Business right, or Prezi for educators, you would just have to be using the free version um, of Prezi. Uh, so you would log in. Uh, so note again, remember with these tools, it's important to understand the restrictions and how it changes. So for personal use, right? Um, well, I guess even standard, you have to pay money. So basic, free, uh, you can only create and share up to five beautiful visual projects, five. UNCG does not have a thing for Prezi. So keep that in mind. You can play around with it, but that's it. Um, and again, they're really going to always take you to these like pay money, pay money things. I mean, they're a business for profit. So uh, keep that in mind. They do have this students and educators version, which again, free five. Um, and again, EDU plus is cheap. It's $3 a month build annually if you wanted to pay for it. And look, you get uh, unlimited projects, import your existing PowerPoint slides, which again, the free version does not allow you to do, um, get premium images, PDF export, video download, so on and so on for only $3 a month. But again, if you're like me, I'm not going to pay that <laughs> even for that. Um, so again, they've upped their, I guess, payment game since I've even last looked at this. So I will add that information into the slideshow uh, for that. Um, okay, so to make these slideshows to add things in, um, you need a lot of stuff, right? So you want photographs, maybe you want to edit the photographs and icons and font. Um, so here are links to the big ones that I can think of in terms of free stuff to get these visual resources. So Unsplash is the huge one for photographs. They have a lot of, um, again, these are these photographs are all like stock images, right? Um, Unsplash, Pixabay, Morg file, free pick, and then the Creative Commons search where you can just kind of search um, and it's free to use. So all four of these, from what I could tell of playing around with them, do not have, um, why am I, oh my gosh, sorry. There's like this beautiful woodpecker, oh my gosh. So rare, okay, sorry. Um, so there's an Unsplash, Pixabay, Morg file, free pick. They don't have that like, what is it? Like 
it's tagging of the images, right? Um, so uh, those are good. Um, I didn't have, free pick was like recommended to me and I didn't have a whole lot of time to play around with it, but um, that's a new one I haven't played around with. Morg file was made for um, teachers, uh, but it has a lot of stuff about like waterfalls and things like that. But Unsplash is the one I use the most. It's totally free to use. They give you citations, right? So if you're like, I want a waterfall. Here's a great waterfall. Um, they're all again completely free of like copyright issues. And then the one thing I like about it too is like you're like, I want to do this. You can download for free, but then it easily gives you the share information. Uh, so when I grab it too, a lot of times they're like, uh, did you want to um, cite this person? Um, so here you can then copy the citation. So I can say this photo is by Tom Gaynor on Unsplash. Um, and put that in my credit page or under it in small print. Again, I like that about Unsplash that they're constantly reminding me to give people credit um, and they give me this nice, easy, free thing to use. Um, so I probably use this one the most. Um, so yeah, some people are like, yes, waterfalls, yes, woodpeckers. Um, so that's a good one. The other ones are great too. Um, just be sure that you're grabbing that citation or giving credit to the author. Just saying Unsplash is like, oh, it's better than nothing. But ideally you wanna say like this waterfall was um, created, you know, this photo of a waterfall was created by Tom Gaynor or whatever. So GIMP and Pixlr editor are like free, easy to use photo editors if you wanted to like cut them down, um, change the tone, anything like that. I don't usually use that for my presentations, but there you are. Again, we remember we also get Photoshop for free through Adobe Cloud Suite. Uh, you go to that UNCG ITS page and can download it onto a work computer. Um, I think also you can put it, I don't know the limits of that, like Microsoft, how many computers you can put it on. Um, I don't know. Probably one. I don't know. I'll have to look that up. Um, and then here are icons. So I, I grabbed an icon just to be like, here's an icon. Um, icons are hot right now, especially these flat icons of graphic design. Um, so a lot of these ones like flat icon and icon finder, they give you different like depth of the icons as well as allow you to sometimes change the color content of them so you could like try, try to match it more to your palette of what you're presenting on. Um, noun projects are pretty like basic and they also come now with a citation of the icon under it whether you like it or not uh, so keep that in mind and then Vecteezy I like actually have never used that but I saw it um, somewhere I think Maggie had recommended it somewhere so you can search for vectors um, photos or videos. Um, so I don't know. Um, bird. I haven't really tried it, but here, see, I can get like these nice free birds. This is cute. I like it. Oh, see. So again, this could add some graphic uh, appeal to your uh, slideshow. So another thing is font. So the two um, font a lot nowadays, Google Slide, PowerPoint, Canva, um, and I would assume Prezi all come with a ton of fonts, right? So like you can match fonts to a style guide or to your um, thing, um, to your thing, to your um, presentation style or anything like that. Um, but note that you can also go to Font Squirrel and the font and download some fonts. So here's one uh, where it gives you some and it gives you the download. Um, where it uh, will download and then you can upload it into your Google slide or your PowerPoint. Um, and then this one is the font, which is again, works kind of a similar way, but you have to kind of know your fonts better here. So like you have to know what they look like or click on it to see it. Wow, wow, road rage, <laughs> so that's the thing. So um, keep those in mind as well if you're really into different fonts. Um, so someone who uses like this stuff more than me, I usually go with the fonts that are in the template or kind of play around with the fonts already in Google Slides are um, Maggie Murphy, our visual resources librarian, and um, she's off right now, but again, oh, cool. Lois just shared um, this, ooh, nice. Pick Riley, Pick, I don't know how to say that, Pick Riley, Pick Real? But this looks cool. So again, public domain images. Um, I'm gonna add it right now. Oops. Anyone else? Did I miss another one? Okay, cool. Play around. 
uh, free stuff. Um, so we're going to talk about accessibility in a later session. So I didn't have a lot about this, but inclusive design is important to think about when you um, are designing slideshows, um, particularly if you're going to a conference or anything like that, um, but as well as when you're teaching, um, whether face-to-face -face or virtually. So um, a lot of these I got off of um, Twana Hodge's Lib Guide to Support Racial Justice and Support Inclusive Communities. And I was like, these could all be used um, to help do inclusive design for slideshows. So um, notice that there is no accessibility links on here because we're doing that later. Um, but that is, of course, a very important part of inclusive design, which is, you know, designing inclusively uh, with EDI and representation in mind. So um, some things you can take or look at that if you haven't before is that there's the implicit bias test, which is again, um, that test that kind of goes through and finds your implicit bias. That's useful to take periodically just to keep in mind when you're like, you know, designing things to make sure you're kind of uh, trying to confront your implicit bias in that way. There's also a link here to inclusive course design, which is kind of a you uh, like, a uh, Harvard University uh, UTLC type page that goes through what to think about when you're doing course design. But again, the same thing can apply when you're doing a slideshow, right? Like think about your assumptions and expectations, diversify course materials, um, plan to assess early and often, plan to vary teaching strategies, allow students to demonstrate learning in various ways when possible. Again, all great advice for when you are presenting or creating slideshows as well. So land acknowledgments are important and uh, great to do, again, particularly within a conference. Um, and that is, again, it, it acknowledging the land that you are on um, in terms of the indigenous people that came before us. So the conscious style guide is also really great if you haven't looked at it. It helps us think through inclusive language. Um, so thinking through terms and making sure we're using them appropriately. And it gives you even categories to think through ability, disability, age, appearance, empowerment, ethnicity, race, and nationality. Um, so if you haven't checked that out, um, do it. It's cool. Um, it's one of those things that you can kind of get going with for a while. Um, uh, but keep in mind, like if I go to appearance, right, it's going to show me like, um, things to think about with your with the way you use words and um, use words in your presentations. Um, and then the last one is um, those stock photos that I showed you don't necessarily always come with diversity and appropriate representation. So I found this blog post um, that links out to stuff and I checked most of these um, to make sure that they were free and easy to use. But here are some kind of alternatives to those stock photo ones I showed you that um, think about stock photos in a more inclusive way. So there's one here beyond the binary, um, which has a lot of non-binary people featured in their stock photos. Um, there's women of color, uh, WOC in tech, uh, you know, in terms of stock photos, um, UK tech, black tech, um, representation matters, which this is again, a lot of different body types, a lot of different people, um, that kind of thing, and so on and so on. So you can kind of create, you know, do this, look through this on your own. But when you're thinking through your stock image, again, remember that stuff like Unsplash, which again, I use Unsplash a lot, when you're looking at people, they're not always the most diverse and represent representative. So looking through these alternatives are a good place to go when you're going through these like people type things if you need stuff up with people in them. So um, here is a Adobe Spark blog post on design. Um, so it will kind of lead you into some how to's about Adobe Spark if you want to play around with that. Um, but it also kind of goes through some like design things. 2 Plus has design tutorials. And then um, this is how to make your presentation design better. Okay, so just the last thing about design before we move on to the templates um, is visual hierarchy is important, uh, which is refers to the arrangement of elements in a way that implies importance, right? So like you wouldn't, um, you know, just go willy nilly with the text all over the place, you have a hierarchy to it. Slide layout is important, right? So thinking about what are the most important message that you want your audience to grab, um, typography, font, right? We talked about that. And then color, the basics of, of um, color theory. So typography, again, um, the big thing is make sure it's easy to read. A lot of y'all pointed that out in the Minty. And we're going to talk more about this in accessibility, like certain fonts that really are not great in terms of accessibility. 
Um, but color is, of course, very important. So I linked out here to some things to think about with color, including um, the UNCG color style guide. So if you haven't seen this, um, UNCG branding guide has a lot of stuff on colors as well as um, templates, which we'll go over in a little bit. But they link all the colors plus their hex codes um, and RGB codes um, where you could change this in presentations um, and come up with color palettes based on the UNCG brand guide. And the thing I like about this is that they have like the base colors, right, of the blue, gold, gray, but then they also have supporting colors, which can be really nice when you're making these presentations in terms of thinking about a color palette. They also have recommendations of um, color combinations, as well as accessibility notes to keep in mind in terms of the contrast, because that's the big thing about the color. The other things we mentioned on this slide are the color pick eyedropper Chrome extension. This allows you to select the color value that, um, again, hex code from websites. So this can be really good if you're trying to match the branding of something, um, maybe outside of UNCG, like you're trying to make an infographic that's like your um, WebEx, um, and then uh, that kind of thing. And then um, coolers. It generates color schemes that you can apply to infographics. So again, this idea of having a nice color palette, um, this gives you color palettes, make a palette. Um, it's nice, it's cool, try it out. I think Jenny has used this before, right? Okay, so now we're gonna dive into templates. Are there any questions, concerns, comments before I uh, dive into them? Yeah, I have never used coolers and I think it's really cool. Is there any quick, are there any quick um, hints from you or Jenny? So Jenny, you use cool coolers more than me. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so I would say, I mean, if you go in there basically and you hit um, the space bar, it just generates new sets of um, palettes for you, but you can, it is editable. So if you have a color, and you want to see what else goes with it, you can go into coolers and uh, paste in a hex code. Um, and from there, um, yeah, so if you'll click, can you click one, click that, Sam, or start the generator, however they say it. Um, so where that one says like, oh yeah, that's trying to put you, take you through a tutorial. Ooh. So, uh, uh, you can also lock colors as it's showing you there. If you're like, oh, I know I really want this blue and this blue, and you lock those two, and then you continue to hit the space bar, um, it will come up with other things that match those. Um, but those hex codes down, like the one for that color 34D1BF or whatever, you can paste something in there. But as Sam's showing here, if you keep one locked, it'll generate other palettes for you. I'm hitting this Thank you. That's what I'm doing. Um, this Fine. is fun. I don't ever use it, but um, yes, <laughs> Susan said this might get me finally paint the living room. Yes, I'm like I'm feeling very like peaceful with these color palettes. Yes, and then it can be addicting to make color palettes. I'm like I can just see myself being on here for like <laughs> like way too long, being like look at the color palettes. Okay, so we've been kind of hinting at this the whole time, but like templates are the jam. So these are these major pit places that you can get slide templates from. Um, so the one that like really got everyone hot into like these uh, slideshow templates are um, Slides Carnival. So if you haven't been there, I would definitely check it out. They have PowerPoint and Google Slides uh, and they are actually pretty consistently adding things. Um, so like most recent templates, like, wow, I hadn't seen this uh, Chinese New Year to, uh, 2021 ones look great. Um, and then again, look at this one, tech, like looks great. So you can also go into here and like put it, you know, like search. Um, and also they have categories based on the popular searches, right? So like, of course, like what I think Audrey was mentioning at the beginning is like, yes, like, um, well, I need to log in. Um, and that's the thing, all of these, like you have to create an account and then it gets you like, you know, X amount for free. Slides Carnival didn't used to have a um, login, but I'm um, sorry, not login, uh, limit. And I don't think they do. Um, it doesn't. Yeah. They have just started doing ads. That's what that oh, was. Oh, that's what I was like, what was that? <laughs> um, but see, that's an ad, right? You have to be kind of careful now. They got to make money. You know, I get it. But let's say you want, oh, look at this cute robot. You just go there. You can preview it, right? You can go down here and say, um, 
look at the preview, you can go through it, right? And be like, yes, I love this robot. It's in every slide. <laughs> I actually kind of like this. Um, and then if you are interested in it, you can download the PowerPoint or you can use this Google Slides theme and it will just um, make you a copy in your Google Drive that you can then rename and start editing away. So let's say I want to use this again. I'm just clicking it, make a copy. Um, yes. Um, it kind of forces a copy the way, you know, I think Amy does those spreadsheets sometimes. And then here it is. And now it's in my drive and I can do whatever I want with it. So, you know, I can say uh, ULVLC test um, and just start going. And they're really easy to use that way. So one nice thing about templates is that a lot of times they are, you know, come with accessibility. They come with these top, um, you know, uh, stock images already in. They give you these transitions. They give you like how you could break them up. They give you columns. They give you picture frames, big images, um, even slide carnival. What I like about it is they kind of even give you suggestions, like use diagrams to explain your ideas, um, so on and so on. So from here, if you like this, notice that any kind of template you use, you can then edit the master. So you can go here to edit, or sorry, I always do this wrong. Slide, edit, master. Yeah, you can do it there or through view, I think maybe. So once you do that, you can go in and make sure your font is the right color. You could change the font to a different font style. You could also change the colors, right? Like different backgrounds, all those kind of things. And then when you're done, you can um, reapply to all as well as, um, you know, save it in terms of a template if you wanted to. Um, so this is again, a popular way. So again, some, you can create these templates from scratch too, right? Like create your own design using color palette, adding in your own stock images, your own font. Um, and this is again, where you could edit the master and change it to be a permanent one that you could apply again. Um, yeah, so again, I love templates. So slides go is what I use to make this one. Um, so this is kind of, again, a newer one as far as I haven't seen these templates as much as I see Slides Carnival. Like when I go to a conference now, I can like almost be like, yep, Slides Carnival, Slides Carnival, Slides Carnival. But Slides Go is, again, I think a little bit different. But you can see, look, they have New Year templates. Um, so this is what I use to do that. You can, again, similar to that, you can search. You can go into like education as a category, see what's going on. Um, like I think, uh, Sarah, when I use this, I use this one for music, uh, 205 and, oh, yeah. I, uh, you know, searched music, <laughs> I got that music style that we used for that one. And it was kind of fun. Totally awesome. Too, even if you don't love everything about it, right? Like you can then go in and edit it, right? You can edit the template. You can change it to your color, right? Like thing and so on and so on. Um, and again, this works kind of similar, right? And they give you the color palette here. I like that. So you could like, you know, use the color palette yourself. Um, you could then download it and preview it. It's pretty similar to how the other one works as well. And then it gives you related presentations. I have found that Slides Go is a little bit better at diversity in terms of their icons and representation um, than uh, Slides Carnival. But I mean, maybe Slides Carnival is going to get better. But like, I already love this one. I'm probably going to go save it <laughs> for everyone soon. But look at how cute that is. I love it. So anyway, those are the ones I use the most. But then again, like I was mentioning, like I showcased, you can also pull it from the tool. Um, so UNCG also has their own templates, right? That, you know, they're branded in these ways and they have them in Google Slides and PowerPoint. So whatever your pleasure is. So um, this one I think down here is Google Slides and this one is PowerPoint. But again, remember you can convert PowerPoint um, one way and convert Google Slides another way. And I will say, sorry, I'll just say this. I just got a text from my mom saying she's going to pick my daughter, Rose. So don't worry about all this stuff flashing on my screen now. I can stay till two. Um, and if other people need to go, that's fine. It does not hurt my feelings. Um, we just went over this, how to change the master theme. And then again, remember, you can also search the themes within Google Slides. Um, again, there's only like six of them. <laughs> again, I feel like Google Slides at this point is like, we got other things to worry about. Like y'all just use these template creators and go from there. Um, so be sure to play around with those if you haven't already. Like hopefully me demoing them a little bit um, shows you how many fun ones are in there. I just love them. And there, again, there's new ones all the time. It's really cool. 
So the last thing we're going to talk about as we wrap up are sharing your slides. So you're going to, like you made this great slideshow, maybe for a conference, maybe for a class. But then again, a lot of times slideshows have links. They have things you want your audience to remember. Um, so creating a link to the presentation is really now I would consider standard. I mean, I would have said maybe a year ago it was a little more cutting edge, but now it's like, I don't know. I always kind of get annoyed if I'm at a conference where I'm like, you didn't share the link. Like, I want to access this later. Um, so that can be nice. So there's a couple of things. So the big one I use, because um, usually what I'm doing is a UNCG related product, is I use GoLinks. So if you haven't used GoLinks already, you just go to go.uncg.edu and then you sign in with your UNCG email address. Everyone at UNCG gets this account. So the nice thing about GoLinks is that they're really easy. You just click on this make a GoLink and then you can make a random one, right? Um, where it just kind of shoots you out a random one, but you can also then um, change it to um, a target where you can specify your own text. So um, if I wanted to do this new one that I just made called ULVLC, um, remember when you share uh, to be careful how you're sharing it. So I'm gonna change this to UNCG and then I'm gonna change this to anyone with the link can view. Um, that's typically what I do. You can also go as far as to um, publish on the web, which I can show you all how to do that in a little bit. That's how you can embed code things, which we'll um, talk about next. But once you get all that, you have your link to the slides, right? You just throw it in there and then you can say whatever you want. So um, I'll call this one ULVLC Sam Harlow. And now it's there. And it's easy to throw in back into your slide, share in chat. And now like all of y'all could enter this weird, um, you know, uh, robot one that I just made, <laughs> but it's that easy. Uh, but make sure again, you check it. I always try to, for a conference, especially I check it in a browser where I'm not logged in at UNCG uh, to make sure that I did the sharing uh, correctly. The other nice thing about my Go links is that you do have a directory of every link you've ever made. Um, if you're like me and you've made 239, I bet, I mean, Jenny, you might have more than me, um, but there's a lot. You can see if they're how often they're getting hit. So like one I made on accessible presentations in 2019 has not gotten a lot of hits, but this ACRL Dole's tutorial talk that was a national talk I get got 108 hits that day. Um, same here, right? This is an ACRL national talk I get, it got 117 hits. ACRL assessment, uh, 144 hits, so on and so on. So you can kind of see if you're interested after a conference, like are people actually clicking on these things? Um, again, usually after a conference or again, like a program where we're trying to get people to sign up for Zotero webinars, you can see people do use them and hit on them. And it's kind of a nice little assessment. Uh, you can also go in and change them later. So if you wanted to go in and edit them to have a new target um, or a new URL, you can do that after the fact if you created one. Because I create a Go link, um, you know, for like a program I have coming up to a Google site to have like an easy, clean link I could send out, you know, so they can be used for anything to, as a redirect to have like an easy to remember link in your head. So the other, if you're at a, doing a national conference and like maybe you're working with other librarians and archivists who um, don't want to have that UNCG branding right in the GoLink alternatives that you've probably seen before the GoLink became big at UNCG is the tiny URL or bit.ly. And that's whatever your pleasure. And same as with the GoLink, you can make your own, right? As long as it's not taken by someone else um, or do that random generator where it kind of just gives you like a clean, small link that you can insert into a presentation and put in the chat or have people like write it down if, if we ever go back to having face-to-face -face conferences. So again, you can also embed Google Slides. I really like this strategy of sharing. Uh, you just go to file, publish to the web and then they're like, are you sure? And you can say yes. Don't worry about that auto advancing slide. They're going to ask you a couple times. And now it's published on the web. Um, and then once you do that, it creates this embed code where you can choose them between small, medium, and large in terms of the dimensions. I usually actually pick small. And then from there, it can be embedded into a libguide, into a Canvas course, et cetera. So um, here's an example um, of a Google slide tutorial I just did on streaming film at UNCG that's now embedded embedded um, straight within the um, guide where people can go through the tutorial 
through a website and never have to leave the website or they can go out to it again later. Um, so again, this is gonna be a really good strategy of sharing Google Slides. Um, so PowerPoint on the cloud version does have this as well. It just doesn't work as well and it's not as clean. So again, Google Slides is better for embedded. Um, yes, perfect. Lois said, I'm gonna use this for the libguide I have to make for, yes, yes. You'll be ahead of the curve, Lois. And so lastly, like if you're doing a national conference, um, keep in mind that you can also make clear to people how cool you are with them taking your content and uh, doing stuff with it. So Creative Commons licenses are great for that and you are your own creator, so y'all can make your own. So this link takes you out to a website where you can Creative Commons choose and uh, you can uh, pick your license. It, I like this because it just, I mean, even if you know nothing about copyright, Creative Commons, uh, you can it just, answer the questions like are you okay with people adapting your work you know yes yes no yes as long as they're sure like commercial non-commercial right and as you change stuff notice how the image over here on the right changes you can also have people attribute you um, by filling out metadata so you know and then you can also add your name to make sure people like attribute you correctly and you can add a go link, a URL, things like that. So see how this started changing? So now you can copy and paste this into a Google slide. It also gives you embed code that you could again, put on a website, put on a Canvas page, um, whatever your pleasure. So keep that in mind. I use it a lot for conference presentations because uh, sometimes after a conference, I'll, I'll have people email me and say like, hey, like, are you cool with me using this in this way? Um, and uh, I'm like, yep, here's the Creative Commons license and let them be known. So that's it. It was a whirlwind. Uh, we pushed right up to that uh, two hour mark. So questions, concerns, comments. Yes, some people are saying thank you. You're welcome. This slide is adorable, yes. I know Audrey said something about elementary school students and I was like, oh, I'm sorry if you all, I just picked this because I thought it was cute and had like a nice graphic image. I was not really thinking about it being like academic. So uh, sorry, I didn't mean that y'all were like an elementary audience. Uh, so uh, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, and uh, that's good to think about too, if, I'm, if I wanted to use this for other things, but yeah. <laughs> Alyssa said, I want to be friends with the kids in the slide. They are very cute. I like their, like, Amy, it's like your Rainbow Academy play study. That's um, right. My girls would love that. Maybe again, this was meant for uh, elementary students, but I went for it. I thought it was cute. <laughs> it was, it was, uh, you know, fun that way. And again, I've never, students usually, like, when I use these kind of templates for my class instructions, are like, oh, this is nice. Thanks. Like, I don't know. I don't know if students care as much about the design as <laughs> necessarily as like we do. Um, keep that in mind too. Um, they just they just want those links and figure out how to do it. Though it makes me feel better sometimes, like working on a cute slideshow. Okay, well, we'll write it too. Um, thank you, Sam, and thank you all for joining us today. Um, we do have two more in this series, which are all up on the um, ULVLC registration forum. And we also have a session next week with Anna and Tim Bucknell on, uh, well, Anna Craft and Tim Bucknell. I wasn't suggesting that Anna and Tim have the same last name. I was just mentioning Anna because she's here. Um, they will be uh, talking about transformative deals. Um, and we've already gotten a lot of interest in that session too. So, uh, I will be one of these days trying to put up the archives of the stuff that we have created already um, this semester, um, but I'm a little bit behind. So we'll get there. Um, and with that, I have a class at two. So I'm gonna close this out and go to my class. Uh, so I hope everyone has a great afternoon. Bye. Bye, Jenny. Bye, Bye. everyone.